Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I just got new spy photos of the Ford Maverick, the upcoming Ford Maverick. This is the Lariat trim. It's different from last week's photos that were at a different trim level. So this is the Lariat trim. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all these photos. We'll talk about what's new, what to expect in this Ford Maverick. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about the big gamble. What is Ford trying to do with this? And I'm gonna ask you guys, the audience, to comment below, do you guys think it's gonna succeed? So let's go ahead and get these photos, and then I'll kind of talk to you what I'm going through as far as in my head about the challenges they're gonna face with this. Okay, let's take a look at these photos. So as we know, this is gonna be based on like the Ford compact car. And they're gonna use a unibody construction on this. It'll have rear independent suspension. Um, we're looking at, I'll check my notes real fast. You have some LED headlights up on the front here. You can see those come out really clearly. Um, you're gonna see some stylized wheels as we go along. We have a sliding rear window, independent rear suspension, like I said, with all wheel drive capability. And then front wheel drives have a lower cost twin tw twist beam rear suspension. So, you know, you're gonna have all wheel drive and front wheel drive. This is gonna be smaller than the Ford Ranger. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be a lot smaller than Ford Ranger. It could be, you know, a, a couple feet in the back and just would be as far as different sizes. What's really interesting right here, as he comes around, you can see an F-150 sitting there. So you can really see in these photos, the size difference in height and off the ground uh, as far as ground clearance there. Um, looks like we have pretty good sized wheel wells, so you'll be able to get some dirt on these tires and be okay. The bed is pretty interesting because it's a unibody construction. We have some a buttress there, a connection, and that's been used, uh, the Honda Ridgeline uses that same construction. What they're doing there is as you add weight to the bed, you're going to um, create more stress in the point where the truck bed and the um, uh, cabin meet, and you have to reinforce it with some buttresses because this will be a unibody design, meaning that, and again, you can see the rear suspension here, meaning that it's going to be all one piece sitting on top of an integrated frame, probably. And so when you do that buttress design, you have to reinforce that. A lot of some steel involved in there. But this is the front end. You can see some tow hooks to get out of trouble if you happen to get in trouble with this. Uh, you have some LED lights. I mean, you know, you have some, you're going to have some nicer trim features here. I'm sure you're going to have the interior will be like the Ford Ranger, pretty much it is currently and you're gonna have different price points. So, you know, one of the things with this truck is that you're gonna have a price point sub 20 is what they're hoping for as far as entry level. And as you change and get higher trims, you'll probably get some, you know, mid 20 range as far as a Lariat or like a higher trim above Lariat. Like, and I don't, I don't see them doing a lot with like King Ranch or Platinum and limited in this. Lariat's prior top, top of your trim, but I bet if you clicked all the bells and whistles, you're probably 25 max, 25 is really what it's gonna be. But you're going to try to keep this in the mid sub 20s and kind of that range. And so the idea here is if you look at, I'm going to go back to their sales for Ford. If you look at Ford sales, you can see cars have just taken the dump. And the reason for that is they cut their lineup. I mean, they cut the Fiesta out. They cut the Fusion out. They're only going to have the Mustang. I mean, and so what they've, what they've done is they've cut the car lineup out and they're adding new trucks because that's where the market is kind of gone. If you look at the numbers, this is from February 2021. You know, you have the Ranger at about 7,000 units. You have the Ford F-Series, which is the F-150, 250, 350, 450. Um, you have in that $65,000 65, volume range. So quite a bit of volume here. Transit Connect is 2,600 units. Um, so you have quite a bit of volume in trucks. You have 88,000, uh, 60,000 for SUVs, and 8,000 for cars. So Ford's trying to make some ground here and get some more volume back and try to build something for consumers who still want a truck, but they don't want the big truck. The F-150 has definitely grown in size um, over the years, and it, it's longer. That's one of the big key things. And it's harder to fit in people's garages. And I know people say comments on this channel about, no, that doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter to a lot of people. A lot of people want to park their truck in a garage, and it does matter to them. So the gamble here is, and if we can transition here to the gamble, is you're looking at where the volume is going to be and how much it's going to be. So you have... Ford doing this, the Hyundai Santa Cruz is coming out, and they're gonna to try to compete in this little subcompact space. The old Chevy Loves, the French Ford Ranchero, uh, that kind of stuff would be in that, in as far as that uh, vehicle size. What really is interesting is when you do a search and you say, okay, well, hey, you know, looking at the Ford Ranger versus the Maverick, because if you know anything about this channel, you know that a lot of passionate truck guys in the channel. And when the Ranger came back out, people were questioning, why buy a Ranger when I can get an F-150 for about the same price? Well, it's a valid question. 
because the Ranger's pricing, this again, lowest to highest in this segment, but if I were to change it and do my search highest to lowest and do best matches, again, I have a, this is a 48433, that's a Detroit zip code. You know, you got a Ford Ranger XLT that's almost $40,000. You know, that's that's pretty expensive. Now this one's thirty thousand. I mean, you it has some pretty good price points, and I guess this is going to be their biggest challenge. Is what you're telling consumers is, is I'm going to build you a smaller truck than a Ranger, which for a lot of people the Ranger is a full size truck for them. And what's funny is the Ranger is the same size as my 62 C10, so they're going to offer them a Ranger for that sub twenty price or smaller than Ranger sub twenty price. And they'll probably stair step it. So if you look at the, the Ford.com, the Ford Ranger starts at 24,000, the Ford F50 starts at 28,000. So if you take four off of that, and you could say you do a Ford uh, Maverick for $19,500, you're again below 20,000 range. But for my question is, how much market is there for that? You know, because you look at, say, other unique vehicles, like other unibodies, like say, Honda Ridgeline. Look at Honda Ridgeline's numbers from February. The Ridgeline only sold like three, well, almost 4,000 units. I mean, it was up, but it's 4,000 units. So you're looking at, when you look, go back to Ford, you're looking at probably a Transit Connect. You know, if they can get Transit Connect, they can get that kind of numbers, three, 4,000 a month, you know, 12,000 a, a quarter. Uh, you're looking at 48, 50,000 a year. That's probably where they're going to be, you know, because there's a lot of challenges here with this that idea of doing a truly compact truck. Yes, consumers have been asking for a cheaper, inexpensive truck, and Ford's gonna build that. Um, but again, when you start looking at the price differences and the rebates and incentives, when you look at, say, a Ford Ranger or an F-150, F-150 has more incentives and rebates than Ford Ranger does, because there's more margin in those trucks. And so getting consumers to get on board with buying a smaller truck that could not have as many savings as the bigger truck has, is gonna be an interesting question. I can see a lot of city dwellers doing this, but to me, a city dweller, um, from my aspect of things, I'd wait for the Rivian electric truck or the F-150 EV, because if you're driving the city all the time, you're probably gonna be an EV customer anyways. And so I'm surprised that, you know, it's, it's gonna be interesting timing for this. Also, a lot of people talk about, well, this is a great rancher truck, and I've said that before. Ranchers always like inexpensive trucks to beat around the farm with. But the reality with ranchers is that side-by-sides have replaced the typical rancher truck. I mean. If you, I mean, this is pretty simple, but if you type in side-by-side -side country um, usage, right, probably, I probably gonna find this easily. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kinda, I'm not gonna find it, but side-by-side -side for ranching. There we go. And we'll do images. Yeah, so uh, there's, again, farmer, 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 farmer. And with the side-by-sides, you can get these under $20,000. You can get the weatherproofing on there. You can get heat. You can get AC in these things. Well, you can get heat. I don't know about AC, but you get heat. And, I mean, it's simple to use. Hop in and drive around. You can load several thousand, a couple thousand pounds in these back of these, these little side-by-sides and just keep working. So I don't see this rancher truck or this Maverick truck fitting in that segment there either. So it's a very interesting gamble they've been playing. Car sales have been dropping off. Toyota and Honda have stuck to the cars, even though the volume's lower, because they make the case that even if you have lower volume, it's still a pretty sizable market. So will this pay off? That's the biggest question below. So let me know in the comments, is this gonna pay off for Ford? Is the gamble gonna work? What do you think? Is a Lariat high trim level gonna be? I mean, is that gonna be the top trim level? As people think it's gonna be, I'm gonna guess it's gonna have leather interior as well. I would imagine it's going to have a 10 speed with a 2.3 liter that used in the Bronco. I think it's going to be very similar to what the Bronco is going to offer in the higher trim levels. And it'll probably go on sale later on this year. They're talking 2022 is going to be the kind of launch date. They're building these in Mexico, which is going to cause a lot of comments as well. But they're building these in Mexico and uh, they're going to import in the U.S. because of the trade relations we have. There's no chicken tax involved in that truck. And so it's going to be interesting to see how the American consumer responds to this. Is it too little too late? Is it the right timing? I don't know. Lots of questions, lots of concerns for Ford on this because there's not a lot of profit in these trucks and it just seems like it's a weird marketplace right now to bring this out in. Yeah, there's my thoughts. Also, for more, check out this video over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.